Thank you so much for having me. It's a great pleasure to be here. My name is Hei Yun Zhang, and um, I'm excited to present my paper, Measuring the Climate Risk Exposure of Insurers. This is joint work with Rob, Sean, and Sharon at NYU Stern, and I'm at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, so the usual disclaimer applies. So understanding the impact of climate change on financial stability is a very important question for researchers, financial institutions, and regulators alike. And insurance sector is one of the key financial sector sectors, and insurance companies can be exposed to climate change risk through their operations, as well as their investment holdings. For instance, physical risk can affect insurance companies with higher than expected claim payouts, and transition risk can affect insurance companies' investments, for instance, in fossil fuel industry, as economies shift to less carbon-intensive environment. However, measuring the exposure of climate change risk is challenging for multiple reasons. So here are some of the major empirical challenges and how we try to address them. So first of all, analysis based on the past climate events may not capture the changes in the perception of risk, and this is because market expectations can change without a direct experience of climate change events, and also asset prices today can reflect the changes in the future climate risk, even if the damages are decades away. So we use a market-based methodology which allows us to fully incorporate changes in market expectations. And second, climate risk itself changes over time and how firms, financial institutions, and market participants respond to the perceived risk also changes over time. So to this end, we estimate our model dynamically allowing for volatilities and correlations to be time varying. And third, Data gaps and timeliness have been pointed out as one of the major challenges, and our methodology only requires publicly available market data. And using market returns allows us to design plausible and sufficiently severe scenarios. And we estimate our model on a daily basis, so we hope that this measure could be a useful complement to other climate stress testing methodologies. So in this paper, we, develop, we use a market-based approach to assess the resilience of financial institutions, especially insurance companies, to climate change risk. And the methodology involves three steps. First, we measure the climate risk factor, and we construct a novel physical risk factor and test its validity in event study analysis. And once we have the climate risk factor, then we estimate time-varying climate beta of insurance companies. And the uh, climate beta of each insurer will capture the insurance company's stock return sensitivity to the climate risk factor that we measured in the first step. And we estimate this dynamically, so we do not assume static balance sheet of financial institutions. And once we have the climate beta estimates, then we can compute systemic climate risk, which we are calling C-risk. And the C-risk is defined as the expected capital shortfall of insurance companies in a climate stress scenario. And we use this methodology, we apply this methodology to um, study large insurance companies' climate-related um, risk exposure. So here are the key findings. First, uh, we measured PNC property and casualty insurance companies' physical risk exposure. And we find that in a physical climate stress scenario, the 1% tail event, we find that the top 10 largest PNC insurers were having positive C risk, sorry, negative C risk, suggesting that they were actually having capital reserves rather than capital shortfall. But on the smaller insurer side, we find that their climate betas were, were higher, which suggests that um, the risk does not seem to be concentrated on the largest PNC insurers. 
And on the life insurer side, we measured life insurer's transition risk exposure. And um, we find that the life insurer's transition climate beta went up sub substantially during 2019 and 2020 when the fossil fuel prices collapsed. In terms of the magnitude, we find that the aggregate marginal transition C risk of life insurers went up by over $70 billion. This is about 13% of their market cap. This, um, is the, this magnitude is somewhat lower than the banks, but still it seems meaningful. And in the last part of our paper, we did validation exercises, and we find that PNC insurance companies having higher operational exposure to risky states were having higher physical climate beta and life insurers having high corporate bond exposure were having higher transition climate beta, which add to the economic validity of our measures. So let's start from the physical climate risk factor construction. So we, in the paper, we had multiple physical risk factors, but let me introduce the simplest version using a portfolio of PNC insurance um, company stocks specifically designed to fall as the physical risk goes up. So specifically, we merge data on PNC insurers' direct premiums earned and we merge that with the data on property damage following natural disasters from shelters at the state year level. And for each year, we compute insurer-specific realized risk, which is defined as this formula, where the risk is the weighted average realized damage in the, in the past year. So the, this term, it's not working. Okay, so this, the left-hand side term is exposure to state S, and it's multiplied by the riskiness of the respective state, which is proxied by the property damage happened in the past, the, the previous year. And we scale it by the market equity um, to incorporate the size factor. And once we have the risk measure of um, each insurers at each, for each year, then we form a portfolio of PNC insurance company stocks weighted by the risk. And we tried variations of the risk measure. We tried using the standard deviation of the property damage instead of the last year's property damage. We also tried subtracting the the direct premium earned to think about the net damage um, after taking after considering the premium earned. And we also tried using the loss to equity ratio, which is a little more direct than this approach. And we find that they are highly correlated. So this is how we argue that the physical climate risk factor works. What we did was we regressed the constructed physical risk, physical climate factor on the shock dummy variable, where the shock dummy variable takes a value of one if it was the start date of the natural disaster event and zero otherwise. And what you see here is the cumulative coefficient gamma over time. Zero is the first day one of the disaster. And you can see that as expected, the climate risk factor falls over time. And around day 12, the coefficient is significantly negative. And we were thinking that the response is somewhat slow. So we tracked what's happening in the newspaper articles. And um, we, first of all, you, what you see here is the average number of New York Times articles over time. The zero is, again, the day one of the disaster. And um, you can see that around day 12, the number of the coverage goes up. So it seems that the attention, um, it takes time to, um, for the attention to, attention to go up. So, and this suggests that the news articles respond to natural disasters with a few days of delay. 
And also in terms of the content, um, what you see um, are the headlines around the Hurricane Katrina, which was one of the most damaging hurricanes in the United States. And on the day one, the headline was saying that a blast of rain but little damage as hurricane hit South Florida. Only after day 12 or so, um, there was discussion of the damage and also the relief. So the natural disasters impact are often not immediately clear, and we think that this could be a reason why we are seeing somewhat slow response here. And we also tried using another factor based on true cost physical risk um, scores, and we find that the responses are quite similar. So once we have this factor, then we can compute the the insurance company's um, climate beta and the C risk. So let's start from the PNC insurer's physical risk exposure. So to estimate the physical climate beta, we regress the PNC insurance company's stock return on the physical climate factor we just constructed and the market factor as the second factor. And we estimate this dynamically um, so the beta is going to be time varying, and I'm calling the, the loading on the first factor the physical climate factor. And what you see here are the, the top 10 US PNC insurance companies um, physical climate beta. And although we do not find any secular trend here, we find that the climate betas were higher during the global financial crisis, and we see some interesting divergence going on in the recent time. And I'm going to explain the variations in the climate beta um, by using the data on insurance companies' operational exposure across the states, um, and that's coming in the later slides. And we, once we have the climate beta estimates, then we can compute C risk. And the C risk is defined as the expected capital shortfall conditional on climate stress. And the C risk is a function of D, which is the book value of debt of the insurance company. And W is the market cap of the insurance company. And long run marginal expected shortfall is expected equity loss conditional on the climate stress. And um, K is the prudential level of equity relative to assets, and we set it as 8%. And lastly, theta is the climate stress level, and we calibrate it to 20%. And this is because negative 20% is the 1%, 1 percentile of the six-month return distribution of the physical climate risk factor. So just to recap, this climate stress scenario that we are considering is the 20% decline in the physical climate factor over the six-month time period. And the beta from the previous step goes into the long-run marginal expected shortfall um, term there with the, with the theta. And here are the estimated physical C risk of the US PNC um, insurance companies. Because the C risk is defined as the expected capital shortfall, the positive numbers mean the shortfall, and the negative numbers can be interpreted as excess reserves. And these are the top 10 um, largest US PNC insurance companies' C risk. And you can see that they are mostly negative, which means that they actually have excess reserves rather than um, shortfall. So this, because these are the largest ones, um, this suggests that the risk does not seem to be concentrated on the largest insurance companies, and this is different from the banking sector. Um, on the banking sector side, we find that the largest institutions were having the highest C risk. And let's move on to the life insurer side, and the potential mechanism we have in mind is through the insurance, life insurance company's asset holdings. They have a lot of corporate bonds, and we thought that um, brown um, corporate bond exposure um, can affect the life insurance company's transition risk exposure. 
So to estimate life insurance companies' transition risk exposure, we follow the similar steps. We first estimate their climate beta. So again, we use the same framework. We regress the life insurance company's um, stock return on the transition climate factor now with the market factor. And uh, for the transition climate factor, we use the stranded asset factor um, we used in our previous paper. It's, um, it's capturing the relative performance of fossil fuel industries uh, relative to the market. So that's the transition climate factor here. And you can see that the climate betas were pretty much a zero until 2019, and there was a substantial rise in the climate betas during 2020 when the fossil fuel prices collapsed. And this is quite similar um, with the bank, banking sector as well. Once we have the climate beta estimates, then we can compute the transition C risk of the life insurance companies and these are the top 10 largest U.S. life insurance companies C risk. And you can see that as some of the life insurance companies were having positive C risk um, during 2020, 2019, 2020, but a lot of them had negative C risk. Okay, in the last part of our paper, we do two validation exercises. First of all, we test whether life insurance companies having a lot of brown corporate bond were having higher physical, sorry, higher transition climate beta. So to test this, let's think about life insurance um, asset side. They will have corporate bond portfolio. Some of them will be on, um, some of them will be for the brown industry. Some of them will be on the green industry. And to characterize each industry, we regress industry stock return on the same transition climate uh, factor and also the market factor. And we obtain the time varying um, transition climate beta for each industry. And once we have the industry specific climate beta, then um, because we observe life insurance companies' um, corporate bond holding, the composition of the portfolio W, we can compute insurer level bond portfolio beta. And just to give you a simple example, if a life insurance company was having half of its corporate bond portfolio in the brown industry and half of the portfolio in the green industry, and if the brown industry has beta, transition climate beta of one, and if the green industry had the transition climate beta of negative one, then this insurance company's portfolio beta is going to be zero. And we compare the portfolio beta computed in this way with the climate betas you saw earlier uh, from this plot. And that's what you see in, in this spin scatter plot. What I'm plotting here is the bin scatter plot of the insurer, insurer climate beta based on the market approach on the y-axis and the portfolio climate beta um, on the x-axis. And the x-axis is computed from this methodology. And this is based on the insure, U.S. insurer's asset holding data for 16 um, public insu publicly traded insurance companies for um, this time period from 2000 to 2020. And you can see that the relationship is positive. So this suggests that life insurers' transition climate beta reflects what they are holding on their asset side, the corporate bond portfolio composition. And we tested this idea formally by running regression. We regressed the market-based climate beta on the portfolio climate beta. And we find that the coefficient is positive and significant, even after including insurer-level characteristics as controls. And moving on to the PNC insurer's portfolio beta, we take a very similar approach. But now let's think about PNC insurance companies' liability side. 
So on the liability side, they are going to have um, insurance policy portfolio, and some of them are to, made to the risky states. Some of them are going to be uh, made to the safer states. So here we test uh, the hypothesis that um, PNC insurer, insurance companies having great, greater exposure to the risky states were having higher physical climate beta. So to test this idea, we needed to characterize each state. And to do so, we used municipal bond returns. So for each county C municipal bonds, we regress their um, municipal bond return on the same physical climate factor. And we, we run this at the weekly level and we use the repeat sales methodology to account for illiquidity of the municipal bond market. And once we obtain each um, county's climate beta, then we aggregate to the state level by taking the 99 percentile of the, the, the um, county level beta as the state level beta. And this is because we think that um, if a state has highly positive beta and highly negative beta, and they don't really cancel out. So we take the largest one as the um, state level beta. And because we observe the composition of the policy portfolio across states, that's the finest uh, granularity we could get. And because we observed that W, we could aggregate the state level climate beta to the insurance company level. And that's what we are calling policy portfolio beta. And again, um, just a simple example, if a PNC insurance company is having half of its policy portfolio in a risky state with um, beta equal to one, and if it is having half of its policy portfolio in safer state with beta of zero, then its policy portfolio beta is going to be 0.5. And again, we are going to compare the policy portfolio beta with the market base um, beta you saw in the previous slides. And here's the bin scatter plot. What you see is the bin scatter plot of the uh, 21 insurance companies over 2000 to 2020. And um, the insurance, the market based climate beta is plotted on the y axis, and the policy portfolio climate beta is on the x axis. And again, the relationship is positive. So this suggests that PNC insurance companies' physical climate beta reflects what they are having on the liability side, specifically their policy portfolio exposure across the states. We tested this, tested this idea formally by running regression again. We regressed the market-based climate beta on the policy portfolio climate beta, and the coefficient is positive and significant. So to conclude, um, in this paper, we measure climate risk exposure of life and PNC insurance companies in the US using a market-based approach. And we find that large PNC insurance companies were having relatively um, low physical C risk, but smaller PNC insurance companies were having higher climate betas. Um, taken together, we find that the the risk is not concentrated in the largest PNC insurance companies. And on the transition risk side, we find that the aggregate marginal transition C risk of the life insurance companies went up over by $70 billion following the um, collapse in fossil fuel prices during 2019 and 2020. And based on the validation exercises, we find that the market-based physical climate beta reflects PNC insurance companies' policy portfolio composition. And the market-based transition climate beta reflects the life insurance companies' bond, corporate bond portfolio composition. So this concludes my presentation, and I can um, use the remaining time for um, questions. And I look forward to um, the discussion. Thank you.